Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Beth Judah, and I am the director of the Suncoast Campaign for Grade Level Reading. We're very pleased that you're joining us for kids' questions about COVID-19 with a focus on children six years old and younger. This webinar is brought to you through a partnership with the Florida Center for Early Childhood and the Suncoast Campaign for Grade Level Reading. And our guest this afternoon, and the person who will be answering um, the questions, is Dr. Christy Skoglin, COO of the Florida Center for Early Childhood. Hi, Christy. Hi there. How are you, Beth? I'm great. Good. Really, really happy to have you here with us. So we're going to ask you some questions that have been posed by children six years old and younger, and a few questions that um, parents have had, all related to COVID-19. Um, are you ready to jump right in? I'm ready, yes. Okay. I'm dealing with a lot of this myself, so <laughs> totally relate to what families are going through. Yes, so the first question is from a parent. Um, there has been a lot of news coverage and talk about the coronavirus and COVID-19. How should I explain the virus to my children? Yeah. Yeah, so I think the first example, the first advice that I would give families is to um, make sure that they understand what they're talking about, but first and foremost, to check themselves and check their own feelings about what's going on because um, we need to be real with how, how we're feeling, if we're feeling fear or worry our, uh, of our own um, because our kids are gonna pick up on our energy. So if our goal is to not excite our children unnecessarily and, and create um, a sense of fear in them, then we need to check our own anxiety about this. So. Um, so check that first in how we deliver the information. Um, and we want to make sure that we have accurate information too, because there's a lot out there and we want to, want to make sure that we're checking the information on reliable uh, websites. Um, so we need to first check our own anxiety. So um, how much detail should we go into with the youngest? kids? I mean, what do we explain about virus and... Yeah. Um, you know, Beth, there's a um, there's so many great tools out there that I think a visual is really good. Um, there's a, a great video that a lot have may have seen recently online. Um, it's kind of gone viral with the, um, the preschool teacher who did a, a, a visual demonstration. Have you seen it with the pepper and the water? Yes, I have. Yes. So um, that, that is a great visual to kind of just show kids very, very basic information about how germs stick to us, but when we wash our hands really well, that the germs go away and they don't stay on our, on our hands. Um, we want to be honest with kids, but with kids six and younger, their, their brains aren't fully comprehending the severity of what's going on, and they're watching everything around them, and they're they're deciding how they're going to respond to whatever is going on in their world. But right now with this um, coronavirus, COVID-19, they're hearing all kinds of names. They're deciding how fearful to be and how to react based on what they're seeing the adults in their life, especially their parents who they trust more than anyone, how they're reacting. So we have to make sure that we're, we're sharing with them honest information because we want them to trust that we're going to be honest with them but only share it in ways that they can understand. These kids don't have the cognitive ability to really understand that um, this is probably gonna get better in a few months. And you know, they just know they live in the here and now. They are living in the moment. And so we need to make sure that those moments are moments of, of where they're feeling safe and protected and that, that those that are caring for them have got this and we're gonna do what we can to keep you safe. That's really good advice, thank you. So this is a question from kids. And the question is, why are so many people staying home now? Yeah. Yeah, so in explaining the virus, you know, it's important to, under, to, to share 
I think the honesty about how we've really not experienced anything like this, at least not in, in most of our lifetimes, in anyone's lifetime really that we know. So this is really new. And why aren't people why are people staying home now? Well, because that's the quickest way to keep the, the easiest way to keep this thing from spreading. And that's what the people that are the, the reliable sources, the helpers out there, um, the doctors, all these people who understand about spread of germs are telling us that this kind of virus, this kind of germ spreads really easily from person to person. So if we are not going out and about, if we're staying home, it's gonna keep it from spreading and eventually it'll go away. So that's the easiest way to share. Mm -hmm. We have to stay home because it is, you know, it's who stays home every day. Right. <laughs> All day you know, it's really un unusual. Yeah, absolutely. So this is another question from um, a child. And the question is, when can I go back to my school? Yeah, yeah, I wish I knew that answer. <laughs> yeah, so I think honesty is, I'm not sure. And here's the information we have right now. And the information we have right now is uh, that you're not going to be going to school at least until this date. And we can even pull out a calendar if they understand that concept, right, and show them but to let them know that we're not sure, we may get more information and every day we get new information. And as I get new information, as your parent or your caregiver, I'm gonna share that with you so you know. Kids need predictability, they need to know what's coming next. And so if they can count on the adults in their lives to keep them informed, then they're gonna feel a lot less anxiety about the situation. If they're left to wonder, kids, can create all sorts of things in their head, ideas that usually are not true. So if they can trust that we're gonna keep them informed about what's coming up, then that's gonna really help. And uh, it's gonna help them sleep better, it's gonna help them eat better, it's gonna help uh, regulate their anxiety. That's really good. So this one also from a child, I miss all my friends, when mm -hmm. can I see them again? Yeah. You know, parents, um, sometimes, you know, we, we talk about in some of the parenting classes that, um, that we do it to honor what we call child-sized problems, right? And so when a kid says they miss their friends, we need to honor that and really acknowledge how hard that is to be away from these people, right? And um, that we hope that he can get back or she can get back to their friends soon. When am I going to see them again? Well, as soon as we, are, we get uh, the word from the people that we trust to tell us that it's safe to start kind of going out again and being around other people. We're definitely going to set up some of those play dates and hopefully go back to school. But again, we don't know. And so just, just to know that we're going to, to even come up with ideas, you know, where we can FaceTime, you know, what we're doing now, you know, to have, to have a visual you know, we didn't get to do that years ago. And now we have this wonderful thing where we can actually see our friends without having to be in the same space. Yeah, that's really good. And I've seen um, some schools that have done uh, parades with cars, the teachers in cars driving through neighborhoods to wave to the kids. Oh, and, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And oh, even I, I saw one on Facebook that was um, a birthday party that the birthday party had to be canceled. So all of the friends made posters and they drove by and, and held the posters up while the, the little boy was in the driveway. Which oh, I love of, that. That yeah. is that's awesome. You and, know, and, I think we're seeing a lot of creativity right now. People are really having to think more about how they can still make something happen without having to be in the same space. Yes, absolutely. And that the birthday party question leads us yeah. into our next question. Um, so this one says, Olivia's birthday party was canceled. Mm -hmm. When will things be normal again? Yeah. Yeah, that's really hard. Yeah, I think, you know, what I know works for a lot of kids is to to kind of uh, normalize and join with them how you wish things were normal too. Because it's not just the kids that want things to be back to normal. We do too. As the adults, we want things to get back to normal. And it's hard for everyone. And, and so to... Um, to acknowledge and normalize their feelings um, and sharing with that. And it makes them feel like their feelings are okay. And um, 
and just knowing that things will get back together, back to normal, a sense of hope that, you know, this is temporary because I think we all, you know, believe that it is. And um, everything that we see, we hear and, and read tells us that it is. So I think we can confidently say this is temporary and things will get back to normal. Mm -hmm. um, and on that note, I have a, um, a cute little video that I don't know that a lot of um, folks have seen, but someone shared it with me. And um, it's a YouTube video um, that I think a lot of folks would um, find helpful in sharing Great. Um, this information with their kiddos. So I'm going to share my screen and play that for our audience. Bear with me. So we're going to go here. There we go. Okay, can you see my screen? Um, I see a screen, but it's not a YouTube. Okay, so I'm going to go to YouTube. There we go. There we go. I see the screen. Okay, and then I'm going to change my audio. Time to come in, Bear. Time to come in, Bear. The world caught a cold. You won't get its germs if you just stay at home. It isn't forever, Bear, just for a time. They're still fun to have here with me while inside. We'll climb pillow mountains, build towers sky high. I'll show you a dance. You can teach me to fly. We'll paint with our paws, Bear. Tell stories, read books. We'll eat lots of pizza. Can you help me cook? Do you know a joke, Bear? The world is still funny. Knock, knock. Who's there, Bear? It's me and a bunny. No visits with Grandpa. Grand's dinner can wait. A phone call is a great call to keep them both safe. No play dates with friends, Bear. You miss them, I know. The next time we see them, we'll make sure it shows. While we stay inside, Bear, the heroes still fight to clean up the germs and make the world all right. So sleep tight tonight, Bear. Tomorrow, we'll see. And no matter what happens, together we'll be. Great, thank you for sharing that. It's amazing how quickly people have uh, designed things to uh, help us all get through this. That was really, really good and something that can be shared because it's on YouTube, so it can be shared yeah. um, with children all over, which I recommend highly. So th this next question um, is from a child, and the question is, are we all going to get sick? And the second part of that question is maybe a little bit harder. Will everyone still be alive? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, are we all going to get sick? Well, I think, you know, if we continue to listen to the people that are, what people are telling us to do and stay in our homes and, and to protect not just ourselves, but other people, then the odds of us getting sick are very slim, right? And, you know, if you watch the news, it, it will talk a lot about deaths in different states. And I think we have to be careful with the younger kiddos to guard what we have on, on our television and what, what conversations we have um, regarding these things because it can um, create a sense of fear about death. Although young children don't understand death um, the way that older children do, it's still, they understand that it's something that is, that is really sad and um, something that they've learned to fear to some extent. So I think, again, reminding them that we are going to do everything we can to keep you safe. and We're going to do everything to keep our family safe and healthy um, is what kids really need to know. They're very egocentric. They want to make sure that they are cared for and that the people that are taking care of them have their best interest at heart. So if we can keep that in mind while guarding our own anxiety about this, the kids are gonna are going to um, fare much better. Um, 
you know, making sure we're not using unnecessary medical equipment. You know, I think we might, some people might feel the need to maybe, or the pull to want to use masks and gloves and these sorts of things. While we know that they're important, we want to make sure that we're not using them unnecessarily because they can make us look funny or scary. And it can also kind of create this level of uncertainty with children. So we want to use those with caution. Obviously, if people have compromised immune systems or other health conditions that require those things, we should explain that. Um, some people are wearing masks and others aren't, but we don't want to get, um, we don't want to create through this, um, this time, we don't want to create little um, germaphobes or um, children that have uh, develop unnecessary anxiety disorders because you know, it, it can happen. Moments like this are really defining and why. So we, we need to be careful what we're doing and how we're communicating. Absolutely. And, and I think um, that idea that we're all staying home and all going through this time, but we're all doing it because it's letting us help. Yes. That by, by us doing these things, we're, we're helping people not get sick. And, we're and helping, we're, yeah. Yeah. And I yeah, think and we're all in it together. We're mm -hmm. all not just our house or our family, but everybody. Everybody's yeah. doing it. Yeah. And I sort of focused on the helpers, you know, and in times like this, there are so many helpers out there. There are so many people helping to make this go away. Um, we can get caught up in the frustrations of um, times like this as well, whether it be what, what our politicians are or aren't doing or um, you know, those kinds of things can really frustrate families, but just to really focus on the positive because kids need to, you know, we've had plenty of conversations, um, at least in, in my, my world about, you know, when, when crisis happen, you kind of see what somebody's made of. And so we want to create children and develop children who can handle crisis, who are not going to fall, fall and crumble. Um, who are going to, you know, have optimism and that stick to itiveness and forward thinking that this is temporary and we're going to push through this. And the way that they develop that is by watching others have that right. same attitude. So um, this next question is um, a two-parter. The, the first is just a statement. It says, everyone seems upset. How can I fix it? Mm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, kids, kids feel like, is, is this a kid asking how they can fix it? Yeah. It is. Yeah. So they're helping to fix it by staying home and doing their part. No one person can fix anything, really. It takes everyone to do their part, and everyone doing their part is us staying home, you staying home. Um, everyone's got to do what little they can do or what whatever whatever their uh, role is and mm -hmm. at that point i think the kid the kids can learn how um staying home is actually doing their part yeah i i took a walk in my neighborhood last night and noticed several driveways had rainbows um drawn in chalk yeah the sign underneath it said stay safe and yeah. i just thought you know what a great what a great way to let the child know that they're doing something to help and, and yes. send them. Yes. Yeah. And that's so, a great example of something that's going on. I've seen those kinds of um, mm -hmm. pages and groups getting together to find some some ray of sunshine or rainbow and all of this. Yeah. So it's a great way to teach kids to find something positive. And that leads us actually to our, our last question, um, which is, I'm very bored staying home, what can I do? Yeah, oh my gosh. So there's um, there's this website um, called Indie's Child and it's got some great, it's always got great stuff on there for, for kids, but I was um, in preparation for this. I, um, I'm not super creative. So I'm like, what, what are so great list of things? There's a list of like 70 things that um, this site has. There's, and I'm sure there's other places online, but, um, I wrote down a few of them because I just thought, wow, you know, if you're stuck in, in home, there's so many creative things that we can do. But um, some of the things they listed was um, go camping in your living room. How fun is that, right? Uh, play board games. You know, I don't know about you, but we have board games that, that don't get pulled out very often. So mm -hmm. about your board games. Um, 
try a new cookie or cake recipe and actually turn on your video camera and um, have your own cooking show, you know, be, do something fun together. Um, of course, bubbles are always in the house and those always bring about fun. Um, create a family tree, dress in your best clothes and, and have a, a nice little dinner together. Like you're, you're you know, having, so there's so many creative things that you can do while you're cooped, cooped up in the house mm -hmm. even for a bike ride outside. But um, if you're staying in and you're really not going out, there's so many things I would um, encourage folks to go to that Indies Child website, and there's a list of 70 things that you can do inside your house with your oh, kids. Oh, that's great. It's really well. Thank you so much. It's been great to have your advice. Um, if anyone on the webinar has questions, please feel free to um, email me the question if you'd like. My email is bduda at thepattersonfoundation.org, or you can send your questions to. Um, grade level reading suncoast.net info at grade level reading suncoast.net we also have another webinar coming up on wednesday for parents of children who are seven years old or older and we'll be having some different questions that we'll answer then and then uh, another uh, webinar on friday that will be um, helping parents deal with um, everything that's going on and giving them some tips on what they can do um, further to help their children through this uncertain time. So thank you all so much for being here. And Christy, thank you so much. I really appreciate thank you, you being available. Great. All right. I appreciate it. Thank bye you. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you.